Sorry to disappoint, you probably thought something incredibly awesome was going to happen there. Instead, we're just continuing to talk about uh, solving, about standing waves. We'll compare them to traveling waves, and we'll solve some problems which often come up in IB situations. Before we solve a sta standing wave problem, I think you should uh, review this table here and make sure you are on board with comparing what's going on in a standing wave to a traveling wave. I don't have too much to say on these other than you should read them and know them. But you may also want to emphasize the fact that standing waves are exactly what they say they are. They're waves that are standing and oscillating uh, from one form to another, but the energy is stored, uh, and that energy is not going to be transmitted. Keep that in mind. Please read this section, pause it, and attempt your very best to solve it. To better picture this, let's say I've got this glass tube here, and I've got water that I can flood into and out of the tube to make the level go up and down, making the air column shorter or longer. And hopefully your teacher has allowed you to mess around with tuning forks over sound pipes and you get this cool resonance effect when you get certain links. So this is going to be a closed tube and what we want to know is that the shortest air length that will resonate is when we have a quarter of a wavelength resonating. It's always a node down here and always an antinode where the air can move up here. So now you got to do a little bit of math and figure out how long a quarter wavelength would be. First I just use the wave equation here, velocity equals f lambda, to find out that a wavelength will be just over a meter long, 1.08. So now I want to say that if I have a quarter of a wavelength, which is the shortest and simplest air column that can cause resonance, I'm going to need it one-fourth of 1 1.08, which is going to give me 0 0.27 meters. Now they're saying this problem, 50 centimeters is the shortest that the tube can be. So this is too short. We will not have resonance happening uh, because we can't make our tube that short for whatever reason. We don't have enough water. But we can drop this to the next thing that can make resonance. And it turns out we can have uh, three quarters of a wavelength resonate that if we drop the water all the way down here we can have this situation or three-fourths of a wavelength resonate and that is going to be three-fourths of 1.08 that's going to be 0 0.81 meters and that fits so yes this length will work and we want to make note that this is going to be at the second harmonic now, you want to find out where else can it resonate. To finish this problem off, I said, well, you can also add another half wavelength to it and put one and one quarter wavelengths for resonance, and that turns into 1.35 meters, and that gives you your third harmonic. You can also go to one and three-fourths of a wavelength, but that ends up being 1.89 meters, which is longer than our tube can go. So you only end up with two different places within this length where you can get re resonance. Look at this problem. Please pause it and see what you can do to solve it. Now the ratio that we're looking for here is going to be the fundamental frequency divided by the frequency of the second harmonic. Now in each case we can say that this is going to be equal to V lambda for both of these. Velocity over now, it'll have different wavelengths, though. This is the wavelength of the second harmonic. Now, these velocities, speed of sound, same for both of them. They cancel, so we end up with this ratio. Once you do some algebra. And now it's just a matter of figuring out what those wavelength differences are. You should be able to envision the fundamental frequency on a guitar string as just being wom, 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 the most simple thing where the length of the string gives you half a wavelength, or you can rearrange that to say that the fundamental wavelength is twice the length of the string. And you should know that for the second harmonic, you've got one node and you have the length e equaling a full wavelength. So if you plug these things in, you're going to end up with 
L divided by 2L. Let's go away, and you end up with a ratio of 1 to 2. Now, you could have maybe just memorized the fact that for strings, second harmonic is twice the frequency of the fundamental, and then the third harmonic is three times the frequency of the fundamental. And that could have saved you some work, but maybe you need to show it. Here's a third problem to solve. See what you can do. Pause it. Give it a go. On these problems, always ask yourself first if you're dealing with an open tube or a closed tube on one end. This is open, so both ends of the tube you should picture as antinodes where the air can wobble back and forth with maximum displacements. And the length of the tube from end to end, and you should know that for fundamental frequency, that is going to be half a wavelength. So let's find out how long a wavelength is using V equals F lambda. Well, we can say that the wavelength is going to equal to V over F, which we put it on 340 meters per second over the 300 hertz. Seconds go away, and we end up with 1.13 meters. So all we need to know is how long is half a wavelength. So that's the length of the tube that makes the resonance occur, and that's going to be 0 0.57 meters. That is it.